The gypsies with whom Frank Chandler and the Regent family are traveling halt for the night. Chandler sees a man lurking in the shadows. He comes closer. It is Prince Nicholas, dressed as a gypsy. He says he often visits the gypsy camps in this disguise. Chandler reveals to Nicholas the plot of Count Metzos to overthrow the king. And Nicholas says he will return that night to the capital. Suddenly a gypsy singer enters the camp. The words of his song contain a veiled threat addressed to Chandler. He goes to question the man, leaving Nicholas alone with Betty. In a moment, there is a scene of confusion, and Betty's voice is heard crying out in terror. Chandu, the magician. Betty, Betty dear, what is it? Betty, are you all right? What happened? What's the matter, Betty? Quick, what happened? My Uncle Frank... Mother, Nicky's gone. He's just gone. Which way did he go? I don't know. I didn't even see him go. What's the matter for Pete's sake? You made enough noise to wake up all the dead kings and queens of Montalbania. Oh, hush, Bob. Tell us what happened, dear. Nothing happened. Nicky was just sitting here with me, but all of a sudden, Lupu said something to that singer. And I heard Uncle Frank say, Lupu, let him go. And, of course, I looked over there at the campfire. When I looked back again, Nicky was gone. Uncle Frank, do you think somebody could have just snatched him right up right before my eyes? No, no, of course not. Well, what was Nick saying to you, Betty? He hadn't said a word. He said, he asked me if I wanted him to tell me the real reason he decided not to go back to Paris. And I said, yes. Well, what was it? He didn't get a chance to tell me. I don't know. Well, can you beat that? He must be around here somewhere. Uncle Frank, what happened to that gypsy that sang? He ran away to the darkness. You see, he had accomplished what he came here to do. And I think he was afraid he might be caught and questioned. But what about Nicholas? I think he deliberately disappeared because he recognized the man who sang. But why didn't he stay and tell you about him if he did? I don't know. But I think he's probably well on his way back to the Bulba by this time. But why would he do that? Why would he run away, Uncle Frank? I don't know. But I'm sure nothing's happened to him. I doubt that even those who kidnapped Nicholas would have the audacity to try it again. I don't know, Uncle Frank. It seems to me anybody that'd have the nerve to kidnap him right out of his own palace garden wouldn't stop him knocking him on the head out in this wild place. Oh, Bobby, don't. Come now, Doc. Why don't you and Betty go to bed? We have to be up early in the morning, you know. And I want to have a talk with Lupu. This gypsy coming to the camp has changed everything. Well, here comes Lupu now. He's probably been around being in the bushes with Dick. You didn't find him, Lupu? No, he must be a snake. That he has legal walk into the forest. Never mind, let him go. It would probably do no good if we caught him. Did you notice his hands, Lupu? No, Chandu. But I think if the mark of the scimitar had been on his hand, I would have seen it. Yes, you probably would have. The mark of the scimitar? Do you mean... Never mind, Bobby. Oh, I don't find it knowing that. Lupu thinks all of the Stevens men have that mark of the senator on their hands. Oh, isn't that awful? It's awful for them, but it's an advantage to me. Lupu, I can see now I cannot take my sister and her son and daughter with me further. Will you ask your father if they may stay with your tribe while I'm gone? Oh, Uncle Frank, you're not going to leave us here, are you? Just when things are getting exciting. Oh, please take us, Uncle Frank. It's just like a movie. Yes, I must leave you here, Bob. Now that we've been recognized... It'd be foolish to take your mother and daddy with me. Oh, dear. I don't think it'll be any fun at all without you, Uncle Frank. I'd rather just go back to the castle and wait until you come back. But we can't do that either. Now, children, don't argue with Uncle Frank about this. Remember, his work comes first. And remember, too, Bob, if you went back to the castle, there would be Mr. Grant and Lesson. Gee, I don't want to go back to the castle. Uh, I didn't say a word about that. I think it would be keen to stay with the gypsies. The uh, only thing I wish is that I could go with you. What do you think could happen to us back there at the castle, Uncle Frank? Anything. Well, Mother, you can't say we aren't getting an education. Last summer we were down in Egypt living in the palace of a princess. And now here we are way up here in Montebania living with the gypsies. And nobody could tell us from the gypsies ourselves. Don't you wish Father could see us, Mother? Yeah, I think it's just as well Father doesn't know about this little expedition. Yeah, I made his eyes pop out, I tell you, when I told him all those things that happened to us down in Egypt. Remember that first day we were in Alexandria and we went down to buy those red slippers for Betty? And the man locked us in the upstairs of his shop? And I certainly remember. I have those slippers with me now, right in my suitcase. Do you remember how Yusuf came into that upstairs room by a secret door and gave us Arab clothes to escape in and told us now you'd gone to Cairo? Doesn't it seem a long time ago? Yeah. And we thought every day we'd find out where Father was. Remember the first time we ever saw Abdallah when he came and sang to us in the marketplace in Cairo? And he had that ring of father's on his hand that Roxer made him wear so you'd see it. Remember, Mother? Indeed I do. When he disappeared in the crowd that day, I thought I couldn't bear it. Yes. 
And if it hadn't been for Abdallah working for Roxer, Uncle Frank never would have had the chance to go there disguised as a sorcerer to Roxer's room. And that's how he found out where Father was. Yeah. Only he wasn't really there in Algiers where Roxer's dead. He took him away before we got there. Uncle Frank, I'll never forget that night you and I went out to that ruin to get Father, and it was all my fault we were so late getting started. If I'd known where that old well was that night, I'd have stepped right in it myself. Oh, now, Bobby, don't keep thinking of that. We found Father. You mustn't reproach yourself about that. Well, no, indeed you mustn't. If Roxaw hadn't taken your father to Malta, and if things hadn't happened just as they did, the coincidence of the trap door over that old well being open and all that, Roxaw probably would have been alive today, and we would still be fighting him. Well, gee, seems to me I'd just as soon be fighting Roxer as these groovy gypsies with swords tattooed on their hands and all that stuff. And Dimitri. Now, Mother, why is it you don't like Dimitri? I've asked you a dozen times, and you won't tell me. I think he's the most fascinating man I ever met. More fascinating than Abdallah? Oh, yes, I really do. Why, Dimitri's been everywhere. Well, Mother, you should just hear him tell about some of his adventures. Abdallah was romantic and everything, but Dimitri's a man of the world. Well, I know he is. I don't blame you for liking him. I think he's keen. It's kind of a break, Nicholas, meeting him in Paris. I mean, kind of fun knowing a fellow like Dimitri. Yes. Think of knowing two princes at once. Think of Nicholas coming here tonight dressed like a gypsy. <laughs> Miss Bessie, I think you and your brother are almost gypsies yourself. Why? <laughs> what do you mean? Your uncle has told me how you have wandered about in Egypt so long seeking your father. And I think maybe you are small part gypsy now. <laughs> Say, Lupu, is it true that the gypsies originally came from Egypt? I mean, hundreds and thousands of years ago. Is it? So it is said in the legend of the Roman, Miss Bessie. Well, have you ever been to Egypt yourself, Lupu? Yes, young gentleman. But of that, Lupu never speak. Why, I didn't know you'd ever been to Egypt, Lupu. What's the matter, Lupu? Please not question Lupu ever about Egypt. Well, gee, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry, Lupu. Lupu, did you know Prince Nicholas was here in the camp tonight? Nicholas? No. Did he depart without food or welcome by my people? My father would be very angry. I do not understand why the prince should visit our tribe and go away unseen by us. Did you know he was in the habit of dressing himself up in gypsy costume and visiting the various gypsy tribes? Oh, yes, I have no doubt. He thinks he is not recognized, but I know his highness, no matter how he stains his skin and speak a Roman tongue. Does Nicky speak gypsy or whatever it is they speak? It is so, Miss Bertie. Oh, Frank, I feel terribly uneasy. Every shadow out there beyond the firelight seems to me to hold a staring face. The darkness is full of great... I... Why, Dorothy... Oh, it's not just my imagination. There's some terrible danger here. You know the yogi warned you himself. Give up this trip to the mountain of the scimitar. You'll be risking your life. And if they know you're on the way, your trip will be useless anyway. Oh, please listen to me, Frank. Please. Must go. I've got to learn the secret of that hiding place up there. You will not go alone, Chandu. You will permit that I also visit my cousins of the mountain? Why, yes, if you like. I'll take you. You're sure your father won't object? Chandu knows that when I seek this lair of my brother, nothing is forbidden by my father. And were he king of all the gypsies in the world, and I his only successor, it would be the same. I don't blame him either. Well, what will happen to us while Lupu's gone? Not many miles from here, there is a pleasant valley, sheltered by two high mountains. Summer lingers in that valley even yet. And there, if I ask it, my father will order that the tribe be camped for a few days. How far is it from here, Lupu? If one whips the horses, the valley may be reached in one day from here. No, oh, but thanks. I know that. But think, at the castle there'd be no one to look out for you but the servants. Unless I ask Nicholas to give you a guard of soldiers. And even then it might not be too safe. But here, these men of Lupu's will protect you with their lives. Don't you see how much safer it is for you and Betty here than back in Lugova? Mm. Just as you say, of course, Frank. Sister of Chandu, your brother has spoken truth. The daggers of the gypsies will guard you and your daughter until there is no longer one man left to fight for you. Say, you sound kind of like a dollar. A fellow we used to know down in Egypt. He used to pull that kind of a line, too. Bobby. I know. In the valley of which I tell you, you will be safe. And maybe, Miss Peppy, you will become so much a gypsy you will never, never wish to return to your home across the sea. <laughs> Maybe I will. I think it's lots of fun to live outdoors like this and sleep in a wagon at night and dress up like this. 
It's just like going to a party all the time. I'm going to get the men to teach me a lot of stuff they do. Is that all right, Uncle Frank? Of course. Listen, Frank. Listen. Do you hear that music? Yes, of course I hear it. I was hoping you wouldn't, though. I don't hear it. What is it? Listen. It's the song of a Stavens' men. 